Many people expressed their interest to learn more about obfuscation techniques, so I decided to create a repository of all the tricks I know and use in penetration testings to obfuscate PowerShell scripts. This repository has a little bit of theory in it as well, so before we dive into practical examples, let's talk a little bit about entropy. A generalization of entropy's definition is the measure of randomness or disorder of a system okay and in information theory this actually means the measure of uh, randomness in a set of data and you might be wondering what the hell does that have to do with AV evasion or power cell obfuscation or whatever okay so here's why i'm mentioning this this is because malware often contains code that is highly randomized right it's many times it's encrypted encoded obfuscated with many different techniques that tend to make a payload unrecognizable very difficult to process either by a human or even a, a machine, a computer, right? To make it difficult to analyze and therefore detect. So imagine if there was a formula that you could pass a specific data set, okay? And with some mathematical calculation, you could determine the measure of randomness of a given data set, like a payload, for example, a malware or whatever, okay? And you could say that, hey, you know what? This, the randomness of this thing is five or it's 10 or it's eight. Then you could statistically create models to kind of predict when a file or payload is malicious and this is exactly one of the methods that antivirus products use entropy analysis to identify potentially malicious files because a file that has uh, a very high measure of randomness is probably uh, malicious or at least it has many more chances to be malicious compared to other files and with other parameters and analysis techniques i, I guess you can determine if something is a malware or whatever. A mathematician and computer scientist named Claude Shannon introduced a formula many years ago with which you can measure the entropy in a set of data. And I think it's really important for someone into AV evasion and pen testing, generally speaking, red teaming and stuff like that, to know this concept because you can actually use this formula. It's a, you can find Python implementations here and in many other sources. It's not something I wrote, I, I edited something that I found online because actually this is a mathematical formula so anyone can express it in any programming language. It's convenient for him. There are also online calculators. This actually is uh, describing this, uh, the sun on entropy is called this formula and there is a calculator down here to use and we're gonna use it very soon. And uh, I think it's really important to have it in mind because you might, you might obfuscate something using all of these tricks and many more you can find everywhere on the internet today and uh, you, you will be able to bypass i think very easily uh, many of the common antiviruses we all have and utilize in our computers but sophisticated systems will see through these uh, payloads that you probably develop using multiple uh, obfuscation techniques just because of entropy of course there are many other variants in this equation but i think entropy plays a, a significant part and it's something you can control you can there are tricks to lower it and uh, you can be careful with what you choose to modify in the script to not uh, fall in the trap of uh, being identified because of very high entropy in your payload and let me just really quickly show you an example of how a little bit entropy works okay uh this is an entropy calculator this is the result here entropy okay so it has this example lore and ipsum you know the classic shrink and uh, it has an entropy, let's say, of 3.99. Okay, let's forget about this example and let's create a, a data set, okay? And this could be a payload right in here. We, we will measure something later. Okay, so let's say we have the data set that is just four A's, okay? This will actually have an entropy of zero because there's actually no randomness in this. There's absolutely, it's just super predictable. It's four instances of A, okay? So let's just add a B. Okay, so let's calculate and we'll see that entropy starts to rise, right? And as many unique characters you add to this data set, it will go up, okay? And let's see, just to understand a little bit, just the feeling of this, the, taste, the flavor of this, uh, of this thing called entropy. Let's add a lot of more A's, okay? And we are two right now. And you'll see that we... The, the entropy fell because now our data set has less randomness because most of the characters in this whole data data set probably you understand that this has also this calculation this formula has to do also with the length the length of the data set okay so our data set grew but it grew less in randomness because it has more uh, similar characters and of course the more weird things are entropy will rise 
This is exactly what happens with a payload. For example, when you grab a reversal command and you start obfuscating, you're adding weird stuff in it, encryption, encoding, uh, weird variable names, weird class names, all of this juicy stuff we do to bypass uh, antiviruses. And you should have in mind that this is also something that is happening uh, behind the scene and uh, antivirus products actually measure this. And uh, statistically, they can calculate and say, hey, this is probably... This is probably malware. More details about this are in the PowerShell obfuscation bible. You can find and read stuff about it here, but let's, for the sake of this video and for it not to be super long and boring, let's just jump into practical examples. So let's check out some of these techniques. Let's go to rename objects. I think it should be a priority to replace variables and class and function names with random ones within a script that you are trying to obfuscate and bypass detection and everything. Okay, so here we have a classic PowerShell reverse L command, just for an example. And I have done this actually, I have replaced the, the variable names because there are no class or function definitions in this uh, particular reversal command. And uh, I also only changed this part here pwd.path which returns the current working directory with the get location gl the, the alias in powershell and actually this worked and this is the case many times at least for me the the test i've run i have noticed that if i just uh, most of the times change the object names in a script and i just use one of these other techniques additionally to obfuscate something uh, usually i'm already there and so let's just use villain which is a tool that can generate uh, reversal commands and also it has some listeners you can see netcat tcp hoxel and we can catch multiple cells and i'm gonna just use it uh to generate uh this particular command that we we're just observing windows netcat powershell lhost equals at zero it's just the same exactly template actually i'm lying it's not exactly the same oh i already have it here okay let's use this one the difference here is that this one has this wrapper to start as a new process and i don't really want, want it right now because we won't be able to see error messages and i want to see error messages because this is actually detected because it's raw it's i mean it's the template that is super flagged I, it has i don't know i don't think there is a solution an antivirus product that cannot catch this cell okay and let me just show you really quickly my virus signatures what's happening Trojan. whoa whoa severe right now <laughs> okay so my virus signatures are up to date and uh my settings my seals are all up and just to be quick i'm gonna use a script to automatically randomize all the variables in this payload i've used the script before in other videos and but i never included it somewhere on github and uh, here in this repository you can find it it's far from perfect and if you execute this against a script that is large probably it will destroy it oh well given the architecture of the script if there's something uh, weird and it replaces something it shouldn't because it thought it's a variable or something but whatever maybe someone can perfect perfect this thing and just do a pull request or something i don't know let's use it i have it um where is it uh we want to run this script and parse as a command line argument the standard reversal template and let's do this from powershell the script is in the stop payload which is an excluded from the antivirus uh, directory on my system should not be saying this but anyway you can do this if you go here and add an exclusion you can just choose a path that you don't want to be scanned and i've done this before because i have my cells uh, up and running and i don't want it to be scanned right now and let's uh where is it okay python let's do randomized variables and we want to do this on the standard reversal template and this is just going to print the payload again but this time the variable names are random and this alone will not work i'm going to show you this really quickly because i've done it before and i feel end of board so if i run this it's still detected so if we just jump into another technique something really reasonable i think that i also describe somewhere here uh where is it substitute commands okay you can just substitute a command that you know an equivalent of it for example i mentioned that this this is the template we're working on this pwd.path that returns the current working directory can be replaced with many things like gl get location and this is an alias for get location or this or 
probably actually this also this very long script i've i've uh, added here as an example but let's not be you know let's just do something simpler i'm gonna clear here because now we're gonna get ourselves finally hopefully uh where is uh power cell so we have the script it's still not working it's it's still detected but if we do this really small change that i mentioned with get location we are gonna fly off the radar and of course this is not something this might bypass the fender here on this uh on my machine that is not in a mature network like security wise and uh it would probably not work against some endpoint detection but if you take into consideration the entropy because you can see that this thing based on the example we mentioned earlier all this random stuff and length probably made the entropy of this payload go up and there are ways to make it go lower and maybe this would work actually in tests i've done it did work against edrs that way so you should read the repository in detail because i have some comments on this i'm not gonna showcase this showcase this right now so let's stop going random let's do the mature thing here which is to identify detection triggers meaning strings parts in this uh, script that is actually uh, uh, flagged as malicious because it's not like everything every component of a script is flagged it's usually some particular part of it because this would like destroy the functionality of anything else that is not malicious right so let's uh let's use AMC trigger which i have it here it's a tool you can just download from, Gim from github just search for AMC trigger it can highlight for you if you do dash f format 3 i think it means it will highlight with red the part of the uh, of the uh payload that you insert it, that you input as a file uh and this is the standard reversal template that we're working with right this the classic one without changed variables nothing let's just run it when it's when it's kind of hanging i have noticed that if you uh stop cloud delivery protection it will not hang and it will just tell us what is the problem i think yes it worked i'm not sure why uh let's turn it back on because i want everything to be enabled so it says that this part is what it doesn't like so let's choose some technique and just mess with this part which is like a 90 percent or 95 percent of this payload whatever i thought it would be shorter but it doesn't matter let's do this get command technique which is really awesome so here's the thing with uh, get command let's open a new parcel window if i do get command this will just drop everything every commandlet and every i think executable that is in the path var environmental variable on my machine okay and uh, here's the trick with this you can use it and the gcm yes get command is an alias for this you can use it for example this would return ex also you can use wildcard wildcards with this this also returns ex for example and you can do weirder stuff as well of course like invoke uh x i guess yes this also would return ex and of course you can just grab this because it's a it's an object a string you can just grab the name of it or you can just without grabbing the name uh run it as a job okay and this is ex right now actually so we can replace ex with this and probably hopefully this will work because this payload has ex here if we do this we have messed with this part that is red it's not 100 percent i'm not sure this is gonna work but it's worth trying so let's drum roll and boom oh it worked no it didn't work but okay we're getting there let's see in combination with um where is it oh yeah in combination with what we did we did earlier okay cl and now we have not changed any variables nothing it's quite similar to what it is originally still doesn't work let's see what else we can combine we could try to add comments i mentioned this also in the repository you can just go 
to some random places and add comments and let's add some random string in this comment and let's let's add one more somewhere for example here okay oh it actually worked and we must have gotten a new backdoor session here on villain let's test it one more time to be sure let me just kill this session to return because it was hanging and i could not con control c out of this so i'm gonna run it one more time and you can see we actually combined like three techniques we didn't change any variable names nothing we just added some comments we did this uh, get uh, command substitution of ex okay and this wildcard thing it gives you endless possibilities to get the command you want endless okay that was an overstatement but it gives you a lot of ground to work with and of course this get location and you see we actually managed to mess with this also this uh, adding comments is a great way to mess with the entropy of a payload and let's go back to our calculator i'm gonna just slap this in okay now we can calculate it has an entropy of five which is kind of high i think not that much it could be of course higher but it is high and let's see check this out as we saw earlier with the simple example i added a's okay and this was actually dropping the entropy because the randomness is decreasing because we have less random characters right this again you can see that it dropped it actually and this payload which would have longer comments it doesn't really matter I'm gonna just slap all this and now we have dropped a lot in entropy and this payload actually and again let's go to villain and let's kill this session also to unhang our cell here and i'm gonna slap this in just for you to see that it actually will work so it, this is a cool way to to drop the entropy and you know combine a few techniques combine a few tricks to also drop the entropy and who knows maybe even in sophisticated environments with uh, endpoint detection stuff maybe you will have a chance to not be detected and you can also take this template that we just created and uh, parse it in villain replace the, the payload template that it has to generate this standard one that is actually uh, detected this one you can replace it i have made a video about this you can find it and check this out so you can combine these two like this knowledge base this repository this demonstration and just create your own obfuscated templates and you will not have to worry for it getting detected after one week especially if you spend some time to create something really unique so hopefully you will find this useful there's a lot of details in all these things that i just really quickly demonstrated right now i have to go for vacation with sister and uh, i'm gonna publish this repository right after this video is finished i have to do some editing if you like it make sure to support this project and me as well maybe you can just follow me or not whatever do whatever you want it doesn't matter this is for penetration testers and red teamers and blue teamers and people interested in cybersecurity. don't be evil don't use this to gain access to systems that you should not have access to except if someone asks you to do it for testing reasons of course and i hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching